So I found this curtain in the thrift store and I really like the pattern. It looks a little grandma, but I thought that I could turn it into something cute. So I turned it into a pinup four with a plated half circle skirt. Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie, and in today's sewing tutorial, I'm going to make a pinup four. So I felt like giving this design some plates. So I'm first going to make half a circle skirt and then I'm going to plait a skirt. So you need half a circle skirt that is two or three times too big for you. If you want full boxes, it needs to be three times too big. So in case you don't know how to make a circle skirt, you have to measure your waist, divide this by 3.14 or pi. Every time I make a circle skirt, I want to eat a pie. And then you draw this measurement on top of the folded corner. Now for the length of your circle skirt, you need to add this little circle to your desired skirt length. And with this, you can draw a big second circle. Then you cut it out. If you enjoyed this video so far, you can support me and my channel by leaving a like and a comment down below. Thank you! And you end up with half a circle skirt that is two or three times too big for you. So now I'm going to box plate this um, half circle skirt. You can also just make a box plated skirt, but I really think that half a box plated skirt falls so much more elegant than just a simple box plated skirt. So it's really worth mixing them up. Them up. Then I started making the plates. So I didn't get enough fabric to make full plates, so I did a pattern from 5 centimeters, then 10 centimeters, that's for the box, and then 5 centimeters again. And this way I got enough fabric to make a box splated circle skirt. I'm not going to explain how to make a, a box plated skirt in this video because it will make the video unnecessarily long. And I already explained this in another video, so I will link that video down below. So plates is one of the things that I really enjoy about sewing. It's like a kind of a relaxing therapy because you constantly do the same thing and you see a nice result. So that's why you see a lot of plates on this channel. I love them. I secured my plates with a simple straight stitch. You don't necessarily have to do this. You can also just pin your waistband directly to it, but I just prefer to secure them so they will stay in their place. Next, I zigzag stitch around the full skirt to prevent them from unraveling. And every time I do this and I see myself doing this, I tell myself that I'm going to buy an overlock or a serger, but, you know, I still do everything with my old sewing machine because, you know, it always gets the job done. But it's really important that you do this to protect your clothing from unraveling in a washing machine. So this skirt is in dire need of a good waistband. So I cut one from... 10 centimeters or 4 inches on the length of my skirt. You can measure your skirt and I measure it on the waistband, but I always avoid things that remind me of mats, so I just did it this way. Then I folded over the upper edge of my waistband and sewn it down with a straight stitch for a nicer finish. And I'm going to pin the waistband to my boxes. Now, when you sew the waistband to the boxes, you need to pay attention that you sew the boxes in right, that they're not folded over while you sew them, so you have to check this while passing over every box. I put a lot of effort into doing this, and when I was done, I realized that my bobbin thread has run out. So yeah, that was a very sad moment, and I had to redo it all. So on my previous dress, the milkmaid dress, a lot of people commented that I should have inserted an invisible zipper. So I took that comment to heart and I'm going to try to get one of these invisible zippers into this skirt. So I started by ironing this because you need to sew very, very close to the zipper teeth apparently and it's easier when you iron it. I was scared I was going to burn off my zipper teeth but that didn't happen. So I just ironed it to get it more flat. I pinned it upside down next to the closing of the skirt and I got some difficulty sewing this and because you have to sew so close to the zipper teeth and I don't have one of these special sewing foods to do this so yeah it was difficult but I got it in in the end and I was so proud of myself. 
And then I attach the other side of the skirt to the zipper in the same way. This side already went a little easier, so I think that I will get the hang of this if I practice a lot. And then I finished this up by closing the skirt, but here my camera fell out, but you don't miss a lot, it's just me sewing the skirt close. And now as a finishing touch, I want to add some suspenders or straps to make this skirt into a pinup form. So I started by measuring the length of the straps and I got something like 85 centimeters. So I cut my strap around 90 centimeters just to have a little bit over. So I cut two equal straps and then I zigzagged around them to prevent them from unraveling again. And then I folded them double and sewn them with a straight stitch. And I'm going to turn this around. Turning them around was a bit annoying and it took a second for me to do it, but you end up with these nice, beautiful straps. And I started by attaching them to the back to each side of the invisible zipper that I so proudly got it. I want to be able to attach and detach the front, so I'm going to secure them with a button. So I placed a mark where I needed to sew the patterns, and then I sewn these cute little buttons that I bought in the thrift store. These were my last two, so I think I'm going to look online to buy more wooden buttons because I love these so much. So I hand sew them, and I really suck on hand sewing. Like, sometimes I suck at sewing and I have to get everything out, but I even suck at hand sewing more. I'm really bad at it. So, I finally got the buttons on. And then I put this back on and I marked spaces where I wanted the buttonholes to be. I'm going to make the buttonholes by my machine. I used to do them by hand, but it's so much easier and they come out so much nicer when you do them by your machine. There exist a few handy tools for doing this by machine. I used to have one, but I lost it. Well, I didn't lose them. They're probably just somewhere in my sewing room and I will really have to clean that up. And once I clean that up, I will probably find them. And then I cut these open. And this finishes my button and buttonholes. And actually, this almost finishes the skirt. The only thing I did was hem the bottom and I only hemmed it once, normally I hem them twice but I really wanted to keep the length on this skirt so I only folded it over and hemmed the hem once. And to finish this project off I'm going to make a matching hair bow. I'm a 24 year old woman and I still like wearing hair bows like an 8 year old child. I'm kind of glad that the cottage core and other styles are bringing these back in. So I simply cut a square, turn it around, cut a strap, turn it around and then I set them together with another strap that I stitched close at the end. And I attach this to my hair with a couple of hair pins. Around a year ago, I made a full tutorial for a hair bow and I will link that one down below if you would like to see this more in depth. Okay, so this is me again and that means that we are at the end of this week's sewing vlog. I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave it a like and a comment and you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would like to see more videos like this one. So when I started this project, because this is more for like my autumn and fall designs, it was bad weather, but I live in Belgium and a day later when I almost finished the project and I wanted to take pictures, it suddenly was 25 degrees again. So I'm not wearing this with the yellow sweater that I had planned for it, that you can see in this video, but with a white top. And I can also wear this one for spring and summer. So it's a piece that I can wear in multiple seasons, what is very nice. 
Okay, that was it. Thanks for watching. Bye.